Jimmy Page is best known as lead guitarist and founder of Led Zeppelin. Through the years, several contemporaries and those inspired by Jimmy have critiqued and spoken about Jimmy's work and of the band as a whole. Here's what they said. Number 10, Keith Richards. Well, as a band, uh, I felt that aptly named, uh, it, it never took off for me musically. Uh, at the same time, Jimmy Page is one of the best guitar players I've ever known, and, and Barnum was a hell of a powerhouse uh, drummer, although I, don't, I think it's kind of heavy-handed myself, and that's, that's where the lead comes in. Um, but at the same time, um, yeah, Plant was exuberant. Robert's exuberant enough to be an LV, although I think he's very much in that English mode of LV, like Roger Daughtry, you know, with the fringes and the blah, blah, and the microphone, and the Rod Stewart's, and even Mick Jagger's comes back. They all seem to sort of copy each other in a bit. But, um, as I say, no, to me, Led Zeppelin is Jimmy Page. You know, you want to cut the story short, Jimmy, yeah, he's shy boy. Number nine. Pete Townsend. I haven't liked a single thing that they've done. I hate the fact that, that I'm ever even slightly compared to them. I've just never, ever liked them. It's a real problem for me because as, as people, I think they're all really, really great guys. Just never like the band. And I don't know whether I've just got a problem block to them because they were, well, they became so much bigger than the Who in so many ways in their chosen field. But I've never liked them. Number eight. Ryan May. Number seven, Alex Lifeson. Then Zeppelin came along and we really fell in love with Zeppelin and they were probably the biggest influences on us. Certainly Jimmy Page was the big, biggest influence on me. I loved his playing and I loved um, everything that he represented, his look, his style of playing the looseness in his playing. I really learned an awful lot from, from him, probably more than anyone else. Number six, George Harrison. Jimmy Page, yeah. Just produced an album with his new group. Is he the one that was on the album? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's lunch ready. Number five, Joe Bonamassa. I'm gonna talk about Paige. Paige always had that kind of I don't have a, my other my other one uh, has a has a better in and out of phase thing, but you know. <laughs> Paige always had those kind of slurry things. And then he, you know, he, he, he did this version. And his sound was always brighter than the other two. Um, I think by design, he, you know, coming out of a, um, uh, being a telly player in the Yardbirds in, in the, in the early, um, stages of, of, of the new Yardbirds when he became Led Zeppelin, um, he was playing the Telecaster, which was arguably much more strident guitar. So I think when he got the Les Paul from Joe Walsh, his ears were already, I can only, I can't speak for him, but I, I would assume that it was, you know, it's just how he hears it. Um, and Paige ar arguably is the toughest to kind of copy the sound. I mean, I'm, again, I'm a tribute guitar player, but um, he had these kind of wacky slurs and things that he would do. And it's, you know, in some circles, it is argued that he was not a very accurate player. I, I disagree. He is, he's intrinsically very consistent. So that's not a question of accuracy. That's just how he plays. And it's one of the hardest things to do is copy those idiosyncrasies in his playing. 
so much so that I'm not going to bother even attempting online. Number four, Paul Stanley. They wrote the book. You know, they, they, they are the reason most bands are here today. Um, their DNA is in everything that everybody does. Um, they were so innovative and such visionaries. Anybody who calls that heavy metal, that's sacrilege. You know, they are truly world music. Um, they grew up, you know, absorbing so much of what they love. Um, you have a band that is rooted in Appalachian music, blues, rockabilly, classical music. It's all there. Number three, Eric Clapton. I think it was one of the early um, heavy metal bands, probably, without knowing it. You know, because when they, when we disbanded Cream, and they weren't around anymore, Led Zeppelin filled the voids, and they became the first kind of official heavy metal band. So maybe Cream was the forerunner of that. Number two, Jake Kiska. Yeah, Paige was a significant influence. Yeah. He took blues in an interesting direction, I found that yeah. fascinating. So, yeah, a lot of technicality. Number one, Jeff Beck. Um, this geezer here. <laughs> no, we were both twisted, you know, at birth, I think. You know, we, we pursued rock and roll in lieu of uh, mathematics. <laughs> You know, that's about it. There was no brain in it, really. Um, I was taken over by rock and roll in the 50s by a wayward sister, you know, who's far, far smarter than me, uh, grammar school and all that. Um, and I thought, if she goes to grammar school and she likes rock and roll, that's what I should be doing. <laughs> so I did that, and that's where I ended up here. Fortunately, though, we do have one more clip of one other guitarist who never says anything about anybody, and that's Richie Blackmore. But he was way ahead of most guitar players. He was really good. He knew he was good too. He had a lot of, you know, kind of. Uh, he, uh, he he was the type of guy that uh, he wasn't arrogant, but he was very comfortable within himself. And then '64 or '5, I, I kind of met up with him. Did a few, did a couple of sessions actually with him. Anyways, what do you guys think of the video? Were there any opinions in there that really surprised you or anything that really stuck out with you? If so, let us know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next video, I'll see you guys in the next one.